Greetings guys, today I'm going to review BitTensor uh, project. For those who are unfamiliar with my channel, what I do is I review projects, I do research, I feed them into a model, the model has an output, I weigh that model's output to reality, and I reflect and modify the model to better correlate to higher ROI in the cryptocurrency space. This is the model, and the project is BitTensor. So, I thought this one would be better for me to actually model how this project works. It would be easier to explain if I did another model describing it. So that's what I'm going to do here as to what this project uh, is going to do and the inner the different players in the project and their and what um, their objectives are. But basically, um, it's under the uh, field of machine learning. Um, that is what this project is going to help serve. And uh, that's what the, uh, the service provided that this project is going to do is try to basically provide, um, allow those who write AI models, write machine learning models to be connected to clients through the validators. So if you look at this model, I'm going to go ahead and fill these parts in so that we can know what we cover. Um, and this, uh, the source is... Uh, uh, one of the founders, Matt Hamilton. Um, he, I think he's the community relations of this project or one of the founders. But um, his, his um, uh, presentation is where I got a lot of these this information from. So machine learning, right? So it's made up of supervised versus unsupervised. So supervised is classification is set by someone who's monitoring the AI um, using regression models, which is our um, new statistics and things like that, correlation analysis. That's how supervised works. Well, BitTensor is under unsupervised, which is uh, the AI determines the correlations on its own using clustering, patterns, groupings, analysis, general analysis, and makes um, understandings, new understandings from that information. Um, the model works on its own. It's uh, unlabeled data. It gets um, conclusions from the data, we have unexpected outcomes, find different correlations, find different patterns. That's what the unsupervised is, and that's what BitTensor is under. It's not under the supervised part of machine learning, it's under the unsupervised. So BitTensor. There are three components to it, uh, clients, validators, and miners. You can, think of the, um, you can think of the validators as being the coordinators between the AI producers, which are the miners, to the clients. The uh, validators curate the data. Um, the miners provide AI work to the validators, which pay the miners. Um, and it's an exchange, right, of AI work from the miners to the validators who correlate and no, um, give, pay based on what is the work that is wanted from the clients. So the clients and the, valid, the validators kind of represent the clients in a sense, and they represent what the clients want. And they help coordinate that uh, what is what is considered valuable AI work from the miners. Um, this could be thought of as customers. The validators can thought of engineers slash holders. They're the experts, the judges of what is good AI work. That um, that could be code or humans. And um, and the you know to be a validator, you got to hold the token, and that's how you run the network. Uh, validation is a cord uh, coordination work um, between the clients and the miners, uh, and the miners basically provide the AI work. So that's just that right there. The miners are the um, engineers. They receive queries. Um, they produce knowledge, uh, the, the unsupervised knowledge. Uh, that's the neural element that could be thought of, the brain component, the neural element, the subcomponent of uh, this web of machine learning that BitTensor wants to be. Now, what BitTensor is made up of crypto. It has incentive powers. That's why we use crypto. The crypto is incentive powers to get miners to produce anything. Why would they produce it? Because they have the incentive of the crypto. And um, so this project needs buy orders in order to work. So we got to ask the question, what drives buy pressure? Well, basically the customers, the clients, uh, or, or businesses that would like to coordinate um uh, governance within the protocol. So those could be the where the buy side comes from. This project needs buy side pressure to work because if you're going to pay miners and pay people to produce AI work, well, they have to get something that has buy orders, right? So um, uh, 
Uh, so we have to ask that question, you know, what is going to be the, who's going to be providing the buy pressure? And once again, it's the clients um, to need access or anyone who wants to participate in the network uh, governance. So uh, that would be the buy side uh, component. So what is the market proposition? Um, the current landscape without BitTensor is major companies um, run these AI engines, Codex, Dolly, GDP3. It's permission, for profit, high cost, and it doesn't grow on each other. Large ca ca um, computation is needed, isolated um, research knowledge base, so it doesn't grow on the previous model. So you have some isolated subsets of knowledge and people spending their resources on these redundant rediscoveries of AI modeling. Well, BitTensor aims to be distributed knowledge uh, contribution, allowing for faster iterations, meaning that um, allowing for um, knowledge to grow on previous models, whereas before we have isolated redundancies, here we could have um, growing on the um, compounding effect of standing on the shoulders of giants, standing on the previous work of different people for new iterations, new understandings, those kind of things through um, by contributing your AI work to this uh, network. Um, that is with the attempt to get to happen. Um, and, you know, it's got large um, computation, which will be another thing. Um, we know that Bitcoin has a huge amount of computers uh, contributing to it. So if BitTensor is capable of getting those buy orders and create buy pressure, then that means that it'll, it could grow and get a large amount of computational work. Um, whereas Bitcoin's miners are wasting energy uh, doing worthless um, uh, hash functions. This project aims to have the miners do non-useless work, which is providing um, artificial intelligence conclusions or computation. And that is where the uh, large amount of computation could be beneficial to this network. Uh, anyone could join and, and, and contribute. So it, it, this also is, is um, a, an ex existential uh, possibility with humans that AI is, you know, AI should not be our fate. AI controls the fate of humanity and Potenzer says, you know, that a lot of the, uh, they get the existential realities of that and it should be out in the open. It should be open source and, and people should have a way to be have governance functionalities or participation or ownership over these AI systems because it does control the future of humanity. So that's a basically um, a rough idea of what's going on here. So now like getting into the model and whether or not we can expect the token to uh, perform. Um, future increase in demand for token model expects that to be the case. The regarding social media, it is a low social media awareness project. Major upcoming events. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information on that. Um, there's incentive mechanisms to drive people to do different things that'll be improved in the future. The biggest thing that I see coming is the Polkadot parachain. Um, this will launch on Polkadot as a parachain and bring a lot of these functionalities into the Polkadot substrate ecosystem. I think that's a wise choice. Um, as I've said before, if you don't know what's going on in Polkadot, a lot of projects won't talk about it. And they also point to the idea that the relay chain, or they'll say that Polkadot is not getting a lot of transactions. Uh, that's not true. Uh, Polkadot has many different, Polkadot is an L0, which means that we're not gonna see the traffic that happen, happens on the relay chain. We're gonna see what happens on the L1s. And you know each L1 is going to split traffic um, in that L1. So you you'll see different channels promote Solana or promote these other chains and saying, oh look, there's not hardly anyone on Polkadot. Um, so that means that Polkadot is expensive. They're they're clueless to what's going on. I'm telling you right now, um, uh, most of the people you're going to hear about in crypto are completely clueless to what's going on. Uh, Polkadot is winning with the developers, um, and once again, like this project shows, you know these. PhDs um, are all using substrate. Many different PhDs with AI backgrounds are using substrate. Why do you think they're using substrate instead of using uh, Solana or one of these other competing ecosystems? They're using this one. It's because of professionals, the designers, they're using the Polkadot ecosystem. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. They're going to do a this project in the future roadmap is going to do a parachain. They're going to launch, and that'll probably be an opportunity to pick up some of the tokens. But there is. Um, an opportunity to pick up the tokens now at BitTensor Exchange. That's where you can pick it up now. And, it, and the, the price last time I checked was $27. Anyways, that's the best I could get of the timeline. Um, so I put yellow for the um, 
roadmap now because I just don't know, know enough information. This is an early stage project. It's not that old. All right. Um, regarding weak hands. Now, it is such an early stage project. So I do think the hands will be kind of weak that are holding it. Mostly, it's mostly concentrated in the founder's hands. There's not a lot of spreading of tokens yet. So it could potential, it's, you know, to have weak hands. The market cap circulating is 80 million, fully diluted 55 million. So that's a pretty, like hardly any, like at least we're over the 10% mark, but the dilution is not that good. So I put, you know, these things, it's neutral or yellow or even red for the token distributions because of uh, the distribution right now and how early stage we are. But that doesn't mean, you know, like, uh, the, the mar well, let me just get right into it. The market size for this um, in the long run um, sure, it could have a short-term dump because it's so concentrated in the founders, etc. Uh, because it's in that early stage. But the size of AI, um, markets for intelligence, distributed neural networks, basically this is stuff that's going to um, – I put infinite market value because we can't really put a value to AI. AI is going to – like as long as it keeps improving, which is the case, and we're in a period of time when AI is exploding – the market opportunity is something that might take us to a Star Trek world where, um, you know, like the very concept of value is is at an abstract concept. And we're, we're, I don't even know where this takes us. Um, but at least within, let's say we want to get wealthy within the next 20 years. Well, this has the potential to 10,000x or more, um, you know, because AI is going to completely change what it means to work, etc. So, but I, I'll just say infinite potential, or I don't even know how to say that. So I'm just going to say the market opportunity is endless. Um, token use for services or governance. Um, stake or to validate, receive, tell through contribution to the network. Um, you know, you receive the token through contribution. Um, most valuable intelligence rewarded with the Tau tokens and Tau incentive to contribute AI. There's 21 million of the tokens. It's four-year happening release schedule. Tau grants external access to the service provided. That's where the buy pressure will come from. Mechanism of uh, alignment of the actors involved. So, you know, the tokens involved. It's a governance token, etc. Uh, I'm just going to take those things out because there's no dividend or token burn yet uh, with this token. Um, regarding price performance, um, it's you want to be careful. It's got a 3x in a bear market within that past couple months or so. Like I think we're like 50% down while this is up 3x within the past period of time that has been uh, around. So I'll just put that's a little cautionary for the price performance. Um, liquidity depth doesn't look good, but once again, this is an early stage. There's, a, there's basically no buy pressure, right, yet. Um, you know, obviously the price is going up, but if you that's – if you look at the exchange, there's very little liquidity. So, like, if you're buying this, you're not gonna, you're not looking to dump it anytime soon, um, because you know, like, uh, it's there's like little to no buy pressure, and that's because it's so early. So that's a cautionary tale right there, and that's why I put I put yellow. I normally put red for that, but because this is so early, it's with all this niche stuff, it's super early. I'm putting yellow because it's just early, and we that's all I could say. Um, all right, regarding governance, this is centralized for now, uh, but, it, you know, obviously it will uh, grow to be more decentralized. Um, you know, there's a foundation-guided incentive mechanism. The DAO is going to be built out. The clients will be in control, the validators, etc. The token distribution is still centralized, so those are things to think about. Once again, it's early stage. Um, what's the mission here? Let's build a mechanism of alignment to, to own the best current AI architectures, help mitigate existential risks. Okay, so those are pretty big visions, right? The existential risks of humanity, I agree with them. I think that um, we can't let AI be grown in an environment that is not controlled by the public. Um, it's amazing to me how few people are even talking about AI because AI has been exploding extremely quickly. I think this is why even Tesla is going after AI because they get it, they see it, they see what's happening. Anyone who's being paying attention sees what's happening with AI and the the rapid rate of 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 progress that's happening there. All right, regarding the team, um, they have a background in no neuromorphic chips. These are very large scale integrations that mimic neurobiological architectures such as the nervous system. So that's the background here. Uh, they were contractors for DARPA, Google. Um, they worked in distributed AI at VMware, which is um, a cloud computing company with 13 billion in revenue. There are PhDs, so they got they have experts. They are um, a, good, a team relevant and capable of doing these things. 
Um, but beyond that, I didn't put like super exceptional, but they are obviously exceptional and they've got PhDs and they come from those backgrounds. But I put neutral for these other elements because, uh, you know, like I, I didn't see any billion dollar startups or et cetera, like directly tied to them or et cetera. So anyways, followed by Barry Silver. This project is followed by some of the winners in the crypto space, early billionaire. Um, you know, they're or curly. Like, so that's an important te- uh, metric that shows you that there's people paying attention to this. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so now regarding all these other elements, uh, like developers, you already should you should understand what the metrics are for the developers based on what I just said. Basically, the incentives are for developers to contribute AI work, um, and that's the whole idea behind this. So yes, all of these, the mechanism, like the user experience, the market proposition, the value, all these things should go up if the philosophy of this, the design of this plays out. Um, large business models and management are going to reflect their needs. So if, um, you know, AI companies will probably be the biggest companies in the world. And if they, if this wins out, then yeah, the to- um, they'll want to have a governance over this. That's probably one of the biggest propositions of this is that you want to have governance over AI and this, this helps you uh, have that governance. All right. So I'll just put all these other things as green because um, those are you know, the relevant components, like the flywheel metrics, et cetera. They all uh, are green metrics. Um, all right, so now these things are just cautionary just because of the early stage of this. And we're going to see if they get traction, see if they get buy orders, see if they get on exchanges, see if they get VCs, et cetera. So I just put that as cautionary. But um, just because it's early stage, but I did put FOMO possible because of uh, you know it being early stage. And we'll see if, if they can get that hype. All right, um, regarding summary... Low market cap with a accomplished CEO. Um, I'll put neutral for that. Um, regarding early to social media, I put green for that. Um, and live niche, I, I think they are servicing some people already or they're pretty close to it. But I could even put neutral for that. But, you know, we'll have to see how. This, so those are the risks. Pros and cons. Um, early stage project, very big opportunity for hype, growth, future prospects because it's so, so early stage. It's not something you're hearing on the channels yet, so we'll see how it goes. If it, um, the low social media presence is good, that's also a pro. Um, token, like now the cons, token model could be stronger for investors, in my opinion. There, you know, I would like to see maybe dividends or token burns or things like that. Um, the, you know, the side for incentive for people to buy and hold this could be stronger. Um, right now, the, the idea is that customers will need a token for exchange services. But then once they give those, um, so like you have an up force for the customers, but then you have a down force for the people receiving the funds. It would be better if you could work on this down force to, to you know, be uh, less so so that, you know, like if, you, you're, if you're a miner and you're paid in this token that you want to prospect, hey, like this is probably going to grow. I can hold it. Or maybe there's some element of, you know desirability there, et cetera. But who knows? We, um, but that that's a potential con. Like I would like to see maybe, you know, something there, but that's just my personal preference. Uh, it's entirely possible that it, you know, it gets that traction on its own. Um, early stage, um, so that not many growth uh, metrics. So yeah, yeah, like another con is that we, we don't know what we're dealing with here with the growth metrics. All right, so, but I will leave it with this quote, this final summary. I mean, machine intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever have to work um, to make. Um, yeah, so once again, machine intelligence is last invention that humanity will ever have to make. Uh, Nick Bostrom said that. Um, so I want you to think about that and think about the implications of humanity's future. And this project is one of those that helps uh, wants to address that. All right, guys, that is the summary of uh, BitSensor. The next thing I'm going to uh, do is go into my Patreon exclusive content, uh, Patreon exclusive evaluation. And um, I'll see you guys there. Otherwise, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.